topic is Paul separated to the gospel of God, and it comes from Romans 1, 1 through 4. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised out for by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And I pray that the Lord would, uh, would bless the, uh, the reading and the hearing and the, and the preaching uh, of his word today to us now. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, he was called to be an apostle. And he was separated unto the gospel. The gospel is worthy of of separated ministers. Ministers that are addicted to the ministry. And ministers who spend and are spent for the gospel. The gospel is worthy of this type of ministry. All of heaven is involved in this work of the gospel. Nobody's sitting on the sidelines. All hands on deck for the work of the ministry of the gospel. And in fact, all of hell is against this very same work, the work of the gospel. There is an innumerable host of unseen powers focused and engaged for and against this work of the gospel. It's caught the angel's attention, and of course it has the devil's attention because he comes against everything that the Lord does. And when the work of the gospel is wrapped up, the earth is going to be folded up. Is when the work of the gospel is done, there's no more reason for the earth it's going to be folded up. You know, when Jesus was done with the garments in the grave, he folded them up. And when Jesus is done with the earth and completing the work of God and the purpose of God, he's going to fold up the earth. It'll be, it'll be done. The work of the gospel actually started before the world began. Jesus, it says, is the lamb slain since the foundation of the world. And this purpose, God purposed in himself before the world was. So God's not reacting to what happens. God makes things happen. He promised it before the world was. And the world is a stage on which he's, he's carrying it out. The first promise of the gospel was actually given at the very beginning. And the whole human race heard it. This was it. The seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. That's the promise of the gospel. Now that's what God's been doing all along. That's what ties the whole of scripture together is to see from the very beginning the seed of the woman coming into the world and is going to bruise the head and of the serpent and now we're we're living in the glory that has followed the bruising of his head the flood of noah's day was a like figure of the gospel and the preaching of the gospel was heard by abraham that all peoples of the earth would be blessed in your seed the law foreshadowed the gospel. Esther was a type of the gospel. Joseph was a prophecy of the gospel. This is all about the gospel. The gospel is God's, the focused power of God to saving men. This is what he's been doing all along. There's just been different stages of the gospel. The gospel is what Jesus came to execute. He came to do, when he said, thy will, O God, I have come to do thy will, O God. He came, he's coming to execute the gospel to carry out what God's will is, his purpose. Simeon saw that when Jesus was just eight days old. He says, mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Jesus insisted on being about this business when he was only 12 years old. He refused to turn from this work that God had given him to do to arbitrate worldly issues, even when he was asked to do so. He required everyone following him to forsake other pursuits to engage in this pursuit and not to take their hands off the plow. He was provoked and he was angered by religious things that had nothing to do with this work. He cleansed the temple. He said, take these things hence. Had nothing to do with God, but they were in God's temple. As Jesus came to execute what God is doing, the purpose of God. He's at the right hand of God now as head over all things to the church. Why was Jesus given all power in heaven and on earth? It's to do the will of God. 
is to carry out the purpose. And the prophet said that the good pleasure of the Lord is prospering in his hands. Everything that God wants to do, Jesus is doing it. He's doing it perfectly. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the fulfillment of all the law and the prophets. They're all pointing to the gospel. It is the eternal purpose of God. Jesus sent his disciples unto all the earth to preach this gospel. There have been brethren that left houses and sisters and fathers and mothers and wives and children for the gospel's sake. Brethren have even lost their lives for the sake of the gospel. And there are many enemies of the gospel. And the devil blinds men to the light of the gospel. I've noticed that there's always enemy activity around where God's working. Now, Paul said he was separated unto the gospel. He was separated to the gospel. Now, there's a, there's a residual effect of being separated to something, is that there's a severing from other things. He was separated unto the gospel, and I want to... I want to bring out how that there's some freedom in being separated to the gospel from other things. Nothing else had Paul but God. He was separated to the gospel. You remember the Levites? The, the Lord said, the Levites are mine. <laughs> he said, they are mine. They didn't, they didn't entertain uh, pursuits like other, other people did. They served God. They weren't even given an inheritance in the land because God was their in, inheritance. They were a separated people in a separated people. All of the Israelites were separated from the world, but the Levites were separated from the rest of them, and they belonged to God. He was separate from the separated. Paul was free from common burdens. Didn't own a house. Didn't own... He's just free. There's a lot of things that, that common people are, are burdened with that Paul just wouldn't be. He was separated to the gospel. He needed transportation. The Lord, the Lord took him by some unconventional means, transporting him all over the place because he separated to under the gospel. He was free from professionalism. Paul the apostle didn't establish an order of apostles. He did the work God gave him to do. He was separated unto the gospel. Paul wasn't concerned with, with uh, continuing his, his dreams and goals and aspirations of, of his churches and of his letters. And No, he's working, he's serving God. He was separated to the gospel and he was free from the burdens of, or, or the, the expectations of professionalism. He was free from the establishment. He came out of the oldest establishment. And he was free from it. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't serve it. He served God. He was, see, he was separated unto. So be, before this separation, see, he went and obtained letters. But after he was separated, he didn't go back and ask for any more letters. He was separated unto the gospel. He was free from the constraint of men. He was free from self. He wasn't he wasn't preaching himself. He didn't even regard his own life. He was separated to the gospel and thus freed from self. He was separated unto the gospel. Paul never built a home. Paul never pursued retirement. Paul was never moved by the praise of men. There have been men that gave their life for the praise of men. Paul was never moved by the praise of men. In fact, he said, if I yet serve men, I would not be the servant of Christ. He was separated unto the gospel. Paul didn't fear man. Paul didn't even fear death. What's the enemy going to do with a man like this? He can't get him with the, with the praise of men. He can't get him with the fear of men. He can't get him with the fear of, fight, of fighting with wild beasts at Ephesus. He can't get him with the fear of death. What is going to be used against this man? Maybe a thorn in the flesh. But no, even then, his strength was made perfect in that weakness. People didn't know what to, what to think of this freedom that Paul had. They didn't, know how, they didn't know how to respond to it. They didn't know 
They didn't know what to do with it. They couldn't contain it. They couldn't identify it. They couldn't put their thumbs on it. They couldn't cap it. They couldn't cover it. They couldn't control it. They just didn't know what. It's because he was separated to the gospel. Paul's work was way above the affairs of this world. Paul lived above the system. Paul was to them like the wind. They saw the effect of the wind, but they couldn't tell where it was coming from. They couldn't tell where it was going. They didn't know what to do with it. Paul was separated under the gospel. Paul worked like this because he was in the yoke with Jesus. There's no, there is no one more separated to the work of God than Jesus himself. And Paul is in, in the yoke, separated under the gospel. He's in the yoke with Christ. Jesus called Paul. Jesus gifted Paul. Jesus sent Paul. Jesus taught Paul. Jesus is building his church, and Jesus made Paul a minister in the building. He entrusted him with the gospel. He is separated to the gospel. Here's some, here's some words that Paul used about, about his ministry. Now, a short digression. There's a lot said about my ministry. I mean among men in the, in the world. A lot of people talk about my ministry, my this, my that, my. Well, here's how Paul talked about what he was given to do. And it didn't. he never highlighted the vessel. He always highlighted the one that sent him. He never highlighted the vessel, but he did highlight the treasure that was in the vessel. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of him. He, he said he served in the gospel. This was not Paul's agenda. This is the work of the Lord. He served in the gospel. He preached the gospel. He's not ashamed of the gospel. He called it my gospel because it was the same gospel that he was saved by. This is how the kingdom works. He say, God saves the vessel. God uses the vessel. He ministered the gospel. He came to Rome in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. The Corinthian church, he said, was begotten. He beget them through the gospel. He fought for the gospel to remain with the Gentiles. He made known the mystery of the gospel to the Ephesians. He defended and confirmed the gospel. He judged that his being in prison was for the furtherance of the gospel, not the hindrance of the gospel. He called his bonds the bonds of the gospel. He preached the gospel in much contention in Thessalonica. Conflict didn't make him give up. Conflict made him preach harder in much contention. Paul says he was put in trust with the gospel. When it came down to it, Paul was more conscious of God than he was of men. Paul was more conscious of heaven than he was of earth. Paul was more conscious of unseen things than he was of seen things. It's because he was separated unto the gospel. The gospel is the rudder and the sail steering the ship called Paul. He said, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. No one ever doubted if Paul the apostle was serious about the gospel. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Paul was compelled to preach the gospel. Jeremiah had a fire in his bones. Paul had a fire in his spirit. He was separated unto the gospel. Paul was so serious about the gospel because God's serious about the gospel. It's not a sideline in heaven. The gospel's not a side issue in heaven. And it wasn't for Paul either. When the Lord shakes all things and that which is temporal, that which is created comes crumbling down, the only thing that's going to be left is what the gospel built. And Paul's separated to that gospel. Not all works need a separated minister. The gospel is worthy of a separated minister. Some things can be done on the side. There are some things that can be done with, without, without really putting too much thought into them. They can just, they can just be done and, and go on. Not all work is the same. Some things can be done just here and there. It's just, just touch and go. Not all works are the same, even in the kingdom. Paul was separated to the gospel. That is, he was in full-time ministry. There actually aren't any part-time positions in the kingdom. He's separated unto the gospel. Paul's at, Paul was actually more separated than the Levites were separated. As he was, he was separated in heart to the gospel. He was separated in spirit to the gospel. Not, not just in an outward, outward form. Not all works need a separated minister. Let me give you some examples of this. An angel came down one night when Israel faced battle the next day. 
and an angel came down and killed 185,000 of the enemy uh, of the army of the enemy. So when Israel got up, 185,000 dead. But that angel wasn't separated to do killing. He was, he was sent to do that work, but he wasn't, the angel wasn't a separated killer. But Paul is separated to the gospel. Moses raised his hand and parted the Red Sea. They're standing in front of a sea and they're pursued by enemies behind them. And the Lord told them, raise your hands, go forward. He raised his hands. The sea separated. They went through on dry ground. They were delivered from the army. But Moses wasn't separated to parting waters. Moses didn't separate waters every day. I don't know that Moses separated waters again, did he? But he separated the water one time, but Moses was separated to the work God gave him, but not to separating, not, not to parting seas. That needed done then, but see, Paul's separated to the gospel. That means he's dedicated to the gospel. David killed the giant with a sling and a stone. Boy, nobody saw that one coming. He wasn't even old enough to be in the army, was he? He didn't, he didn't even wear the, the, the regular armor. He didn't even fight with conventional weapons. When God took out the, the giant that everybody else was afraid of, but David wasn't separated to killing giants. David didn't start a seminary of sling and stone. God gave him that work to do, but it was just that day, and, and he was done with it. He wasn't separated to become a giant killer. But Paul is separated to the gospel. That, see, this is a dedicated work. He, this, this, is, this, was, this was Paul's work. Peter, the apostle Peter, struck Elymas blind. Elymas the sorcerer. Struck him blind. But thank goodness God has not separated anyone to striking people blind. He did, he did separate Paul to the gospel. He separates men to the work of the gospel... But he didn't start a consortium of, of people who strike other people blind. You know, I, I think I've seen some people appoint themselves to be the corrector, you know. I, I, it, to take on themselves the, the, the ministry of telling you that you're wrong. Well, see, God doesn't God didn't appoint ministers like he didn't separate someone to tell you to, to rebuke. Some people would really enjoy that, being separated to rebuking other people. But God separates unto the gospel. He separated Paul to the gospel. There are probably too many specialized ministries today that don't specialize in the gospel. Acts 9.15, the Lord said, Go thy way, for he, that's Saul, soon to be Paul, he is a chosen vessel unto me. Go your way. He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. He's a chosen vessel unto me. He's separated. He's, he is for this purpose. He is for this work. He's separated to the gospel, and the gospel is worthy of this type of separation. There, isn't, there is not a Paul in every generation. There wasn't a Moses in every family. There was one Moses. There are, the, the Daniels of the world are few and far between, aren't they? But their works do follow them. When Paul gave, when God gave Paul to, to the gospel, he was given to us too. He wasn't just given to that generation. It's said of David, he served his own generation well. But see, we're still receiving from Paul's ministry because he was separated to the gospel. He wasn't separated to a generation. He wasn't separated to his nation. He wasn't separated to a city. He was separated to the gospel and the gospel still being preached today. The scripture says, they being dead yet speak. And so Paul, well, actually Paul never, he never did really die, did he? He just, he just passed over. But his works are following him. He yet speaks. The work of the Lord is not bound by time and space, and the truth is not subjected to the laws of nature. The truth operates in a realm above nature, and it's superior to time and space. And so technically, by the calendar, Paul lived thousands of years ago, but see, his, his, he yet speaketh. His works do follow. His works do follow. He's a chosen vessel. Un, unto Jesus and this vessel still being used it's still being used today brethren in a in a very eternal sense we are all fruit of the apostle Paul Amen. Paul is a vessel unto honor he is a gospel vessel 
when Paul, when the, when this vessel of Paul was broken, gospel came out everywhere. He is a vessel unto honor. His eye was single because he was separated to the gospel. His heart was united because he was separated to the gospel. He chose this one thing that the Lord gave him to do. He chose the one thing and he would not be turned away from it and it was never taken from him. Even Saul of Tarsus was zealous for God. Saul of Tarsus was not a vile sinner. We've heard people talk about Saul of Tarsus as being, being a murderer, as if he is a, a vile sinner of the, of the world. What, Paul, what Saul of Tarsus was doing, he was doing out of zeal for God, but he says not according to knowledge. And so what did the Lord do? He, he, ble- he actually he redirected this, ze- this zeal in Saul of Tarsus to his church. He was serving God, but not, a- not according to not according to knowledge. And when he realized, being confronted on that road to Damascus, that it was the the Lord Jesus whom he was persecuting, and this Lord Jesus whom this church was serving was the, the Savior promised in the Holy Scriptures, well, then you'd never seen zeal like this. One of the, one of the greatest enemies of the church became the greatest minister of the church. He was a, he's a chosen vessel. Jesus never makes the wrong choice separated unto the gospel. He's a chosen vessel. When Paul was in Athens, he found his, his spirit stirred within him. He found all these altars to all kinds of gods, and he found one altar that said to an unknown God, and so he preached the gospel. He would, he, Paul connected everything to the gospel. He saw an unknown, a, an altar to an unknown God, and he says, well, I, I know this God that you don't know, and he preached the gospel to him. When they opened the floor for exhortations uh, at uh, Antioch in the synagogue if you have any word for exhortation for the people say on he seized the opportunity and he preached the gospel why because he was a chosen vessel he was separated to the gospel Paul didn't entertain other pursuits his pursuit was the work of the gospel when they brought animals Paul healed a man at Lystra they brought animals out to him and would do sacrifice to him because, because they thought that he was a god that had come down come down to the earth what did he do? Preach the gospel. He preached the gospel. Paul never missed an opportunity to preach the gospel. He never missed an open door to minister the gospel because he's a, he was separated to the gospel. He was faithful to the gospel. Paul was a gospel specialist. He specialized in the gospel. Everything was done for the gospel. Everything he heard, he filtered through the gospel. Everything he said was born out of the gospel. Paul had no hidden agenda. Everybody knew what Paul's work was, even if they didn't understand it. There was no ulterior motive in Paul. He was separated unto the gospel. Now, Paul's ministry was not multi-purpose. It's, it's, it's very common today for, for things to be designed and built uh, for to be multi-purpose. We can use this in all different ways. The Lord isn't much on that. See, there was, a, there was really only one thing that happened in the temple. What was it? Meeting with God. And there's really only one work that Jesus came to do. What was it? The will of God. Paul wasn't a multi-purpose type of minister. Now, he did teach about marriage, but when he did, he anchored it in the gospel. Because that's the best teaching about marriage. You husbands, you love your wife like Christ loved the church. And wives, submit to your husband like the church submits to Christ. Paul had a, he taught about government. But when he said something about government, he was really talking about the government of God. He said, you honor the king, but there, there is no power but of God. That's why, that's why we we, we can honor the king. It's about living honestly and godly. When he addressed uh, matters of immorality, then he, he preached Christ, the Passover, has been sacrificed for us. When he wrote to masters and slaves, he told them about their master in heaven. See, at every opportunity, the gospel poured out. The gospel poured out of Paul because he was separated to this, to this work. If he, talk, if he talked to parents about raising kids and if he talked to kids about submitting to their parents, obeying their parents, then he told them about their heavenly father. Everything was about the gospel. You know, Paul traveled a lot, but he never did go sightseeing because he was separated 
to the gospel. Paul wrote a lot, but he never did write fiction. He was separated to the gospel. Paul had a lot of thrilling experiences, but he was not a thrill seeker. He was separated to the gospel. He stood trial and he gave his own defense, but it wasn't for any wrongdoing. Paul filled the palace as a prisoner with the message of the gospel, but he wasn't a guest of state. He was actually a prisoner of the Lord. All the members of the body are not eyes and all the members of the body are not hands. There are many members, but there are not many members like Paul. He was separated unto the gospel. Paul is a wise master builder. And we can, we can rejoice, brethren, that, that the Lord has given a gift like Paul to the church. He's a wise master builder. Just think about what we would be taking out if we took out Paul's teaching of the, in, from the scriptures. It's a wise master builder. So when Paul goes to building, he wields the whole counsel of God. It's at his, it, it was entrusted to him. And when he's building, he has the manifold grace of God within his grasp to build with the manifold grace of God. He knew how to build where people were drawing back to Moses. What do we do about these people going, uh, draw, uh, going back to Moses after they've confessed Christ? Paul, can, he can do some work there. Wise master builder. He knew how to build where, where uh, he knew what to lay down when the church wasn't working because they were convinced that Jesus is going to come back any minute and so they quit their jobs. No, Paul knows how to build there. He could, he's a wise master builder. He's separated unto the gospel. He could go to work where brethren were taking brethren to court in the church. He could, do, he could work there. He could do some building there because he's separated unto the gospel. Paul wisely built when he found a servant who had run away from his master who was a believer. And Paul, being a vessel unto honor and a, separated unto the gospel, he converted and sent him back. Paul built... He was a wise master builder. Paul never did say, my work here is done. Paul never did say, oh, that church is doing good. They don't need me. Paul never did say, that person's doing good. We don't need to pray for them. He's he separated to the gospel. He spent and he was spending. Separated to the gospel. Paul said, it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. So what, how, did, how did Paul judge this, this, this work that God had given him to do? He said, I was separated from my mother's womb. From my mother's womb, I was separated. Well, doesn't that remind you of some, some other works in the womb? John the Baptist leaped in the womb when, she, when he heard the voice of Mary. She, he leaped in the womb. What about Jacob and Esau? He's in the womb. He said, Jacob, have I loved Esau, I hated. Paul said, I was separated from the womb. Now, he didn't work in the gospel from the womb, but he was separated Amen. from the gospel, for the gospel, from the womb. <clears throat> for a long time, it didn't look like Saul was separated to the gospel, but he, 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 was, he was separated from the womb. And it's because known unto God are all of his works. From the very beginning, from the beginning of the world, the work of the kingdom is done according to, to God's purpose. The Lord wasn't looking in the earth and, and run across the, this, uh, this man named Saul of Tarsus, and the Lord said, hmm, I could use him. No, he was separated from the womb. Known unto God, all, all of his works, God made Saul to be whom he was and made Paul to be the vessel that he was. God, the gospel is God purposing and doing his will. That's what the gospel is. Here's how Paul wrote all this up. He said to the Corinthian churches, he said, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. He said to the Galatians, Paul an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. He said to the Ephesians, Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Do you see consistency here? Separated from the womb. He said... Paul, according uh, apostle Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God. Paul, an apostle Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Paul, an apostle Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect. Paul was very sensitive about where credit went for his ministry. Very, he was separated unto the gospel. I'm going to start concluding here. Paul was to the Paul is. You know, I've said a lot of past tense words and I need to, I need to get, get, get away from that. Paul is to the gospel what Moses was to the law. 
He's got he's a he's the he's the vessel that God used to establish like the foundation. He started the work in Paul. The gospel is he's the separated unto the gospel. The gospel is high and deep and wide and long. Think of that vision that the prophet Ezekiel saw of the water that proceeded out from the throne and it got deeper as he measured out a furlong and another furlong and it got deeper and deeper and deeper. See, this is the nature of the gospel. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And it and Paul, see, the there's this water streaming, streaming forth from this vessel. It was invested in this vessel, this chosen vessel. Paul revealed and established the, the nature of the gospel. Paul preached both Jew and Gentile. See, here's, here's some things that he was separated unto. The gospel is to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. We learned that from Paul. <clears throat> and what about justification by faith? Where, do, where did we learn justification? Man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Paul taught us that. What about the new creature, the new man? Is a new, a new creation. Who, who wrote about that? Paul. Paul the apostle, he was separated unto the gospel. What about, the, what about imputed righteousness? Abraham, Paul went back and dug around here, the, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Was it before circumcision or after? Oh, it was before. It was before God imputed his righteousness. We learned that from Paul. Did we see in the, in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, did we see that principalities and powers in heavenly places, or in the, that... The principalities and powers were spoiled when Jesus died. Did we see that in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? No, Paul ministered that. He was separated unto the gospel. <clears throat> the gospel is preached. The gospel preached brings us into the kingdom. The gospel preached keeps us in the kingdom. The gospel preached is preached that we might grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is preached to address dangers and troubles. The gospel is preached to feed the flock of God. The gospel is preached to establish our hearts in grace. The gospel is preached because Paul started preaching the gospel. I'm thankful that the Lord separates ministers unto the gospel. <clears throat> and I want to I want to be, I want to be one of those who receives the one, who receives one that God sends. You know, if we if we reject one that's sent, we've not only rejected him, but we've, we've we've rejected the one that sent him. And if we receive one that is sent, we not only have received the one that was sent, but we also receive the one that sent him. And so I rejoice in this one who am sent, Paul the apostle, who was separated unto the gospel. Thank you. Amen.